This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. SMC Podcast Network, and as always, I'm your host, Jesse Tapia. Alright, so today's show is going to be a bit of a weird one, because you know what, we're going to have to talk about LeBron James and the possibility of him going to the Golden State Warriors, believe it or not. Good old ESPN. So we'll talk about that. Alright, we're going to start off the, we're going to do the first segment talking about that. But let me give you a little rundown of the show. We're going to be talking about the NBA scores. I think from yesterday, should we do that next? In the second segment, the third, I'm not sure yet. We're going to talk about Jason Garrett, talk about him being on the hot seat, or even if he is, talk about that. Kind of how they pretty much talk about the Cowboys under Jason Garrett. Talk about how they pretty much underachieved and haven't really done anything. And I'll just like, just, yeah, we'll talk about Jason Garrett and the Cowboys. I'll just give my thoughts on that. Then for the fourth segment, as we always do, we'll be talking about anything going on in sports or just anything running through my mind as far as the sports world goes. All right. So let's get into it. So like, I don't even know how to like attack this little thing, like this uh, this article that ESPN wrote. All right. Here, let me, let's go a little timeline. All right. So it's late at night to, where was it? Yesterday, Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday night. It's late. I'm checking my phone and searching through Twitter, you know, seeing what's out there. All of a sudden, this tweet by Chris Haynes, who works for ESPN, has an article talking about, it says, sources, Warriors could set up talks with LeBron James if Mac deal, Max deal is available. All right, and we know what, that, what, what ESPN is trying to do. All right, they're trying to build the LeBron to the Warriors hype train. Okay, the first paragraph of the article says that the Golden State Warriors can create a max sal- salary slot this offseason. The defending champions could position themselves to secure a meeting with LeBron James. League sources told ESPN. Second paragraph, there is no indication that Golden State is evaluating such options to acquire the C- Cleveland Cavaliers star at this time. That doesn't make sense. All right, he's reporting. I gotta be, I gotta be nice when I'm saying this. Okay, I don't want to call it like like a garbage hypothetical, but that's pretty much what it is. All right, this is terrible. All right, this is such a non-story. This is like a professional team, or yeah, like a professional team offering me money to go play for them. Yeah, it could happen. Chances of it are pretty much zero, but it could happen. If they wanted to, I mean, it's just it's, this is this is why I really don't like ESPN anymore. Right? ESPN used to be like this prestigious, like they still are the top dog out of all these little sports media outlets and all that. But I mean, ESPN used to actually like report on stuff that was actually news. All right, instead of reporting garbage like this, trying to create headlines out of something that's never going to happen. All right, LeBron to the Warriors, that's not happening. Okay. And you know what? We're gonna talk about what, ha- what we're gonna talk about what happens if it does. Like if it does end up happening, it does go. Okay, we're gonna talk about all this. But as far as like right here, the article itself. I mean, why are you gonna report to like hypotheticals? It makes no sense. Why are you just like ESPN is pretty much the like they don't report facts anymore. All right, they just try and create so they have something to talk about for a couple of months. This is such a waste. It's so frustrating to see. And this is like pretty much how all journalism is now. All right, all of it. It started with Stephen A. Smith and Skip Bayless. They're the reason why we got all this craziness going on. All right, when they first started doing first take, when they were doing first take, it was actually a good show. Then eventually it got big, and the whole one yelling at the other and Skip saying all kinds of crazy stuff was their thing. 
All right, the hot takes. So then eventually you get paid more, and that's just the thing right there. And it's ever since then, it's all been garbage. From Spock, Fox Sports, from ESPN, all garbage. All right, all hot takes. All just hypotheticals that'll never happen, but stuff that'll get clicks, stuff that people will watch, and just something to keep the conversation going. All right, it's all just trash. It needs to get back to what it used to be, reporting actual stuff. Like guys like uh, Tony Kornheiser and uh, Michael Wilbon. Like stuff like PTI, like those are actual good shows, all right? Because they don't, they're not, they're not like first take or undisputed on Fox Sports One. That shows awful too, but nonetheless, I mean, like it's just frustrating to see. Why are you gonna go out and report something like this, all right? Because it makes no sense to me. Like, how are you gonna go? Like, like I know what ESPN is doing, and it's so frustrating because it's working. It's getting the clicks. It's getting the views. All right, I'm. All, I was on ESPN's website earlier, right before the show, and there's articles about three paths that could get LeBron to the Warriors. Would it be worth? Um, would LeBron? Would it be worth? Um, would it be worth the risk for the Warriors to uh, sign LeBron? Uh, what if he did sign with the Warriors? Like it's just like now. That's what. That's what. That's going to be ESPN's. That's at the, that's at the top of their NBA site. Let me see. It might be at the top of their little home site too. Oh wow, they got a Giannis. Oh, no, LeBron is right there, actually, so, it's just, ESPN is no longer, like, there's no, really no such thing as real, true sports news out there, like, you know, like, the stuff that newspapers used to write and all that, all right, it's just garbage from now on, but, I mean, they ta- they report this, so now we gotta talk about it, it's just ridiculous, LeBron isn't going to the Warriors, it should have never been something that was even brought up, I can't believe that they actually, like, how are you going to write something and say that the Warriors could, like, how are you going to write an article on hypotheticals that won't happen? It's just frustrating. But nonetheless, here we are talking about it. ESPN got us. It got everyone. Because everyone on every show, all right, I turned on the TV earlier, uh, put it on Fox Sports 1 real quick. What's going on? Oh, they're talking about LeBron going to the Warriors, skipping Shannon, all right? ESPN, Bleacher Report, all over it. All over a non-story. Uh, it's literally a non-story. But since it's LeBron James, since it's the Warriors, it's something that you got to talk about. So let's talk about if LeBron goes to the Warriors. Let's say this crazy, no chance, hypothetical does happen. All right, let's say it does. You're probably going to have Steph, LeBron, and KD. I don't think you get to keep Draymond and Klay Thompson because you're going to have to shed money, obviously, from what the article says. You're going to have to shed money in order to give LeBron a max contract. So what happens to the league if LeBron James goes to the Warriors? You know what happens? The Golden State Warriors pretty much win the championship every year until LeBron retires. That's what happens. The league is done if this was to happen. The only people who would enjoy it are Warriors fans and from the few that I know I'm not even sure if they would like this just because of the fact that it just takes away the competitive balance of the league all right and personally I wouldn't be mad at LeBron if he went to the Warriors I would be a-okay with it all right the whole Blake Griffin getting traded to the Pistons after signing his five-year deal the offseason right before literally this year should open up people's minds as far as loyalty and sports and pretty much what players are doing as far as competitive balance and all that. They don't care and they should never care. All right, that Blake Griffin trade, Griffin trade, like I said, should open your eyes to saying, you know what? These players need to go out and do what's best for them. Eventually, we're just people who are watching other people do their jobs if you want to put it into simplistic terms. All right, we day in and day out, I'm over here watching basketball. Like I said, but in simplistic terms, I'm watching guys just do their job. I'm watching guys go to work and just work. That's it. All right. So we got to understand that these players aren't out there for us. They're out there for themselves. All right. If there's no real money in this, in the leagues or anything like that, then you wouldn't see players like LeBron James and all that out there. Because, I mean, let's say, yeah, it goes back to my whole, I talked about it a couple months ago. I think it was or last month. Go ask a player. If they would play the game for for free. 
You they might tell you, yeah, because I love basketball or football or whatever it is. But in reality, love of the game doesn't pay the bills. So no, they wouldn't. But nonetheless, going back to the point, if LeBron goes to the Warriors, I mean, like I said, that team would work. It would work. LeBron could be the primary ball handler. Steph is a great off-the-ball shooter, off-the-ball player. All right. LeBron James can get the ball to Kevin Durant, nice facilitator. And, you know what, honestly, ESPN is kind of kind of genius for this now that I think about it. Not a good genius. Like, genius to a point where the plan might work. All right, because I'm sure if this article doesn't get out, no one even, like, it doesn't cross anyone's mind about LeBron going to the Warriors, okay? But now that this is out, Maybe you have Warriors, front office exec executives thinking, hey, can we actually pull this off? Like, what would it take to get LeBron James here? All right, now they got it in their mind trying to think, hmm, maybe we could do this. Obviously, the article says that they have no plans of doing it right now, but it just fills your mind. All right, we got what? Up until June. June is when free agency is when June is June when free agency starts in July. I think July. So we got what's the month that we're in? Barely starting February, by the way. I mean, January. Finally over, probably the longest month in the history of months ever. I mean, geez. But nonetheless, we got the month of February, March, April, May, June, and then, like I said, July is when free agency starts, I think. So that's five months for the Warriors to think about, should we do this? Should we clear money? Should we go after LeBron? And if they go after LeBron, I mean, it could happen. All right, as of right now, I don't see it happening at all. Just because of the fact that this is just a crazy hypothetical that I came out that came out last night, you got Kevin Durant saying that it's BS. All right, today at practice, and I mean, as far as LeBron going to the Warriors, like I said, they win the championship year after year. And I was just reading off Twitter too the replies to the article and all everything else talking about it that LeBron would ruin his legacy. He would never be compared to Jordan, and it'd pretty much be it for him, throwing away his career as far as like I said, just legacy and. Being an all-time great goes. No, it wouldn't. All right. People got to get that out of their head. I was talking to Tay earlier. The guy that runs the place. All right. He was telling me that Bill Russell, dude has 11 championships. Played on probably one of the greatest, had at the time, had probably the greatest team ever. Had tons of talent. Bunch of Hall of Famers on those teams. But no one talks about how Bill Russell had all those guys on there. They just talk about his 11 championships. All right. And that makes sense. LeBron, whether you like it or not, is already probably, arguably, could be the best player of all time. All right, and people want to admit that just because they don't like the guy. Go look at everything else he's ever done. Oh, Jordan won six championships. Kobe won five. LeBron won three championships. That's pretty good right there. All right. Plus, as far as LeBron and Kobe go, LeBron's getting beat out pretty much every major statistical category. And I'm sure if you look at the advanced stats, LeBron's got him beat there too. It's no contest. Let's be real here. All right, but nonetheless, going back to it, LeBron's legacy, I mean, I don't think him going to the Warriors really affects it. Kevin Durant pretty much broke the whole, oh, he went to the best team. Like, no one cares anymore. Now players are just going to go play where they want. All right, right now the league is just five, probably four or five teams that have a real chance at winning the title. All right, the Warriors, the Rockets, Celtics, and I guess you could still count the Cavs, even though I don't think they're making it to the finals. All right, so it's actually four teams. The Spurs aren't doing anything in the West. Oklahoma's not. Oklahoma City's not good enough to beat the Rockets or Warriors. Timberwolves just not there yet. All right, as far as the East goes, I'm not sure what to think about Toronto yet because I mean, we've all come to know and love them as a team who gets bounced in the second round. They're pretty much the LA Clippers of the East. The Cavs, even though they are playing poorly and I don't think they're going to get back. I mean, they got LeBron. They get they, they always find a way to pull it off. I think this year is different, but nonetheless, they always find a way. And the Celtics, look at them right now. Number one team in the East. Kyrie Irving could get Gordon Hayward back at the end of the year. Jason Tatum has been playing well. Jalen Brown, Al Horford. And then you they could be bringing in possibly Greg Monroe or Tyreek Evans or even possibly bringing them both, bring them both in. So right now, I mean, it's just a four-team league. LeBron goes to the uh, LeBron goes to the Warriors. I'll watch, but it's over for everyone. No one has a chance. And as far as his legacy goes, it's not going to change a thing. All right, we got to get over the whole players need to go to other teams, make it competitive. No, players need to go where they want. I'm all for LeBron James if he like if they somehow made this a possibility and the Warriors did end up clearing cap space for him. 
I'm all for LeBron going to the Warriors. It wouldn't matter to me. Like I said, I'm just some guy who watches other people go to work and do their job, so I'd enjoy it. But nonetheless, don't like the fact that ESPN reported a story just based off of hypotheticals. Like maybe if the Warriors were in the process of trying to do that, like in the process of trying to shed cap and all that in order to get LeBron, like they started that, I'd be fine with the article. But the fact that you, like I said, let me reread the first paragraph. The fact that you put, if the Golden State Warriors can create a max salary slot this offseason, the defending NBA champions could position themselves to secure a meeting with LeBron James, lead sources told ESPN. Yeah, obviously. All right. Obviously, if you create enough cap space, you can probably get a meeting with LeBron James. Yeah, you're not. Ugh, it's just so frustrating. And like I said, next paragraph, there is no indication that Golden State is evaluating such options to acquire the Cleveland Cavaliers star at this time. Garbage. All right. That's all I got to say about that. Garbage. That's going to wrap it up for this segment. Next up, we're going to be talking about the let's talk about the Dallas Cowboys. Let's break it up a bit. Third segment, we'll be talking about um, the NBA games from Wednesday. And then, like I said, for the fourth segment of the show, we'll be talking about anything else going on in the world of sports. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines, they got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Last segment, we had to talk about the possibility of LeBron going to the Warriors. Talked about the article that ESPN put out, specifically Chris Haynes. He's the one who wrote it and tweeted it out. Tweeted it out last night and pretty much set the NBA world on fire. All right, now it's a big old thing. Now ESPN's got a bunch of articles on it on their website. Now uh, you got Fox Sports talking about it in their morning talk shows. Uh, pretty much, I'm sure everyone else is out here talking about it, but when they shouldn't be, because it's all just meaningless hypotheticals. All right, that's what it is. I um, don't think that the Warriors are gonna blow, are gonna get rid of Draymond and Clay Thompson in order to bring in LeBron. That's just me, but what do I know, right? So now for this segment, we're gonna switch it up a bit. We're gonna be talking some football, not Super Bowl, because we're gonna do that more tomorrow. But we're gonna be talking Dallas Cowboys. I know there's a lot of Dallas Cowboys fans out there. I know they have thoughts on Jason Garrett. I, too, have thoughts on Jason Garrett. Emmett Smith today had some thoughts on Jason Garrett. Emmett Smith said that he believes Jason Garrett could do well with the Cowboys this season. But if he doesn't, he's out. Meaning they should fire him. Emmett Smith, I agree with you. Alright, Jason Garrett with the Cowboys has just been... Average. That's it. He's been average. All right. Started coaching them with them and became the head coach in 2010. He was the interim guy. All right. Started coaching them in 2010. Week 10 is when he started. Went 5-3 and three for those eight games. All right. And that makes no sense. If he started, coach, started coaching week 10, how do you... Oh, nonetheless, says 2010, he went 5-3 and three in eight games. All right. So... After that, first full year in 2011 goes eight and eight. Second year, 2012 goes eight and eight. 2013 goes eight and eight. 2014 goes 12 and four, makes playoffs, wins a game, loses a game. 2015, I think that's the year Romo got hurt. Brandon Brandon Whedon was the guy after that who came in. Man, that's brutal. Nonetheless, Romo goes down. Backup comes in. They go four and twelve. 
Then Dak Prescott, Ezekiel Elliott, amazing rookies. They go 13-3, and three, lose to the play, uh, Packers in the playoffs. Is that the Dez Caught It game? No, that's not. That's not. That is not that game. All right, and then this year they went 9-7, and seven, no Ezekiel Elliott. So it seems pretty good, right? 67 and 53 and let's see about it's been eight years of coaching all right we're counting that first year where he only coached eight games because he still went five and three so that's pretty good still all right winning percentage 64 and right, if you want to put it into how they do it it's 0.644 playoffs play um had three playoff games only been there twice one and two so those numbers sound on paper pretty good, but the Cowboys are a team that haven't really been anything since the 90s. The Cowboys are a team that holds on to past glory. All right. Jerry Jones is what keeps that is what keeps that team relevant. All right. Bringing in the big billion dollar stadium, the big star, all of that. That's why the Cowboys are still relevant. In reality, they haven't really been anything since Troy Aikman and Emmitt Smith and Michael Irvin were on that team. All right. The Cowboys, I think, if they don't make the playoffs this season, it's time to get rid of Jason Garrett. And I'm saying even if they go like 10-6, and six, barely miss out, get rid of them. The Cowboys are a team that should be on the same level as like a Pittsburgh Steelers type, like a Green Bay Packers, and like a New England Patriots. Meaning, they're one of the more prestigious franchises in all of the NFL. All right, they're on that tier one spot with teams like the Steelers, Packers, and I guess you could say Patriots now. Okay, they got the Super Bowls, they got the history. They should be a team that, yeah, you're going to go through some bad years, but. It should be a team who is always competing for the division and always making playoffs. I know it's a bit unfair to say, but that's just how the Cowboys culture should be. All right, Like I said, they're one of the more prestigious teams in all the NFL as far as history goes. Going 8-8 eight and eight, and then 12-4, 13-3 a couple of times sounds nice, but the Cowboys should have did a whole lot more with Tony Romo. And I understand some of it wasn't Jason Garrett's fault because, yeah, Tony Romo sometimes would just throw an interception at the worst possible time where, uh, let's see, could or he'd be a holder for a field goal and maybe he'd fumble the snap and take off and then get tackled at the one and lose the game. Maybe Tony Romo's done that before. And obviously, you know what I'm talking about, the Seahawks game. Never forget, that's like the first, that's like the first Tony Romo choke moment right there. But nonetheless, this team should have been fighting for playoffs year after year with Tony Romo. All right, going 8 and 8 is average. 12 and 4 was cool. Like I said, they won the playoff game, then they lost. They go 13 and 3 2016 with rookie running back and quarterback, making the playoffs going 13 and 3 with those rookies. That's pretty good. And then it was a lost season in 2017. The Cowboys are the one of the ultimate achievers of the last decade or so in the NFL. I say over or under. I meant underachievers if I didn't say that. All right, but nonetheless, they should be a whole lot better than what they have been. All right, and it's not going to get easier for the Cowboys either because you know what? You got those Philadelphia Eagles who have the best quarterback in the division as of right now by far. I mean, best quarterback of all time. You guys know who I think is, at least in that division I'm saying. Don't get on me. And I'm talking about the quarterbacks as of right now. I'm talking about like all quarterbacks in that division. You get what I'm saying. But nonetheless, you got to worry about Carson Wentz coming back next year. All right. You're probably, the Cowboys fans are probably going to see, the Cowboys fans, the organization is probably, might see the Eagles win the Super Bowl. That's not good watching one of your biggest rivals win the Super Bowl. All right. Like I said, Carson Wentz coming back next year. Dude was looking like one of the best quarterbacks in the league before he tore his ACL. Let's say he comes back. ACL is fine. And didn't have to worry about it. Cowboys are in trouble there. Then the New York Giants. You got to worry about them a bit. Made good um, coaching hires. Brought in Pat Shermer to be the head coach. All right. Ran a nice little offense in Minnesota, obviously. Made Case Keenum look good. 
And now he's going to a team where he could have the possibility of just keeping Eli Manning, drafting Saquon Barkley. Odell Beckham Jr. is going to be back, I think, if they give him a long-term deal, which they should. You got Brandon Marshall who's going to play on the opposite end. He's looking like he wants to do a whole lot better than what he's been the last couple of years. So now you got to worry about the Giants. Plus, they brought in the old Arizona Cardinals defensive coordinator, and I think he's going to sharpen up that Giants defense, okay? Because they have talent on that defense, but I think there's just a big locker room problem as far as, like, yeah, like, the Giants' defensive problems last season, I think, had to more had more to do with just dysfunction rather than ability. Then there's the Redskins in that division. As of right now, probably the worst team in that division. But they're, I don't think they're going to be a bad team. All right, they brought in Alex Smith, traded for him, gave up Kendall Fuller, and a third-round pick. I think that what um, Washington has on that offense right now fits the way Alex Smith plays. It fits his play style. And the whole, I mean, I know I'm saying that, but like the whole, I'm going to say one thing too. The whole um, Alex Smith can't throw deep, he's game manager. I mean, if you're still saying that, then obviously you weren't paying attention this season. All right, so I'm just going to say that. It's kind of, it might be time to retire it, but I think with the Cardinal, with the Redskins, I mean, he's going to go back to it just because of how that, uh, how those receivers are. Plus, he's got Chris Thompson out the backfield. That's going to be a deadly little option for them. So, yeah, it's going to be difficult for the Cowboys to go and make the playoffs this next season. Because it's not even, not only you got to worry about your division, you got to worry about the wild teams who could fight for a wild card. All right, because now the Rams are good. The Seahawks are usually good, especially with Russell Wilson at quarterback. 49ers might be something to worry about because you know what? We're going to wait and see. We're going to see what Jimmy Garoppolo is. And if he is as good as uh, what he showed this season in those six games, then that's another team you got to worry, worry about as far as uh, the wild card goes. Let's go to the NFC North. The Vikings, I think, will still be a good team. All right. Aaron Rodgers is, the quarterback, is a quarterback in that division for the Packers. That guy's pretty good, I hear. And then you got the Detroit Lions. We're going to be bringing to Matt Patricia if he just fixes up that defense a tiny bit. That's a playoff team right there. Let's see. Am I missing the, the NFC South? Yeah, that division right there had three teams who made the playoffs this season alone. All right. And then you got to see maybe the Bucks will bounce back from this bad season. So the Cowboys, like I said, they might be in some trouble as far as making playoffs because there's going to be a lot of good teams in the NFC this next season. All right. It's going to be miles better than the AFC. I already know it. So... Obviously, you're probably thinking it's a little bit unfair for me to say that even if, if the Cowboys don't make playoffs, then fire Jason Garrett. I still firmly believe that, all right? You can't keep wasting away these years. Jason Garrett is the epitome of average. That's it. He's average. He's a yes man. What Jerry says, Jason does. All right? That's probably why he's been around for so long. I mean... Those three eight and eight seasons right there, I mean, that might have been too much. That might have been reason to get rid of him too. Nonetheless, they kept him. Yeah, they went 12 and four, saved him right there. Tony Romo gets hurt the next year. That's a save. Then they go 13 and three, saves him there. And then he had a rough rear going nine and seven. Now people are starting to realize, oh yeah, this is Jason Garrett. So Jason Garrett didn't make playoffs, then it's time to give him the boot. Cowboys should be doing a whole lot better than what they have done this last decade. All right. They need to be competing for playoffs year, be in the playoffs year after year, competing for the division. All right, they've had teams good enough to be a yearly playoff team, and I think that they weren't because of the fact that Jason Garrett was coach. So we're gonna have to wait and see. But that's just my thoughts on it right there. That's actually gonna wrap it up for this segment. Next up, we're gonna be talking about uh, the NBA games from Wednesday night. Got some picks right, got some picks wrong. Cavs finally won a game. Didn't play well, but nonetheless, they pulled it out. So stay tuned for the next segment, and we'll be right back. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G. SMCpodcast.com for more info.
welcome back to the GSMC Sports Podcast. So far in today's show, we've talked about LeBron and the possibility possibility of him going to the Warriors. Thanks a lot, ESPN, for that one. Uh, let's see, we talked about Jason Garrett and the Cowboys, talked about how he's just been average and how he deserves to get the boot if the Cowboys don't make the playoffs this season. Not sure if Jerry Jones would do it just because Jason Garrett's a bit of a yes man, but I think it'd be the right move. Emmett Smith thinks so too. And again, I think Emmett Smith thinks so because he said earlier on first take, I believe it was, that if that Jason Garrett could get him to the playoffs, but if he doesn't, then that's where you give him the boot. All right, And I agree with it. Emmett Smith is a smart man. But we're going to be talking for this segment NBA games from Wednesday, so let's get into it. All right, we had the Boston Celtics facing off with the New York Knicks on ESPN. Was a bit skeptical about this game, picked the Celtics, but was a bit skeptical because no Marcus Smart, as you know, and Kyrie Irving was not playing in this one. So you had Terry Rozier inserted into the starting five and worked out pretty well for the Celtics. They won this game 103 73. Kristaps Porzingis, he had 16 points in this one, 4 rebounds, shot 7 of 18, 1 of 5 from the 3-point line. Saw a stat yesterday saying in the 3 games that he's played against Boston this season, I believe it is, he shot 10 for 40. Not great. Alright, but yeah, Porzingis had 16 points, 4 rebounds, just to reiterate. Tim Hardaway had 4 points, only 1 rebound, 1 assist, shot 1 of 10. Not a great game from him. And his Cantor, 17 points, 17 rebounds, shot 7 of 10. Solid game from him. Jared Jack only played 20 minutes in this one, had 2 points, shot 1 of 5. And then Courtney Lee, 7 points from him, shot 2 of 8. Not great from him either. Obviously, as you could tell, no one really on the no one on the Knicks really played all that well. For the Celtics, you had a lot of players who played well. You had Al Horford with 14 points, 9 rebounds, 5 assists. Five assists. He shot six of twelve. Jason Tatum dropped in fifteen points, only three rebounds, shot seven of fifteen. Jalen Brown, fourteen points, four rebounds, three assists, shot six of fourteen. And then Kyrie Irving's replacement, Terry Rozier. What does he do in his first career start? He drops a triple double. He had seventeen points, eleven rebounds, ten assists, shot six of fourteen. And then off the bench for the Celtics, you had Marcus Morris with twenty points, five rebounds, shot six of nine. Let's see. And then Abdel Nader with ten points, shot three of four. I know Terry Rozier's name as far as uh, the Celtics trying to pick up Tyreek Evans trade for him. Terry Rozier's name has dropped in a little bit for those trade rumors. Honestly, I don't think the Celtics should do that. I think if you're going to trade one guy, it's either got to be a guy like Abdel Nader, uh, Yabu Sele, the little guy from Europe that they got, or you trade Marcus Smart. If you could do Nader in a first round pick for Tyreek Evans, do it. But I don't think the Grizzlies are going to take that. So I think the Celtics are going to have to offer up uh, Marcus Smart and a first-rounder for uh, Evans. I don't think you get rid of Rozier with the season he's having, especially doing well leading the um, leading the second unit. So I think you got to keep him and just say, you know what, sorry, Marcus, but you're out of here. Next game, we had the Memphis Grizzlies facing off with the Indiana Pacers. The Pacers won this one, 105-101. This game took place in Indiana. For Memphis, you had Dylan Brooks with 12 points, 5 rebounds, shot 6-19. Marcus Saul, 23 points, 9 rebounds, 6 assists. He shot 9 of 18. Wayne Selden had 24 points, 4 rebounds, shot 8 of 14, 6 of 10 from the 3-point line. And then I think it's Andrew Harrison. He had 13 points, 6 assists, 5 rebounds, shot 4 of 8. No Tyreek Evans in this one. was uh, Actually, wasn't even at the, at the arena. I don't think he's going to be playing at all until he gets traded to someone else. So pretty much next time we see Tyreek Evans playing in an NBA game, it'll be for a different team. For the Pacers, we had uh, Thaddeus Young with 10 points, 5 assists, shot 5 and 9. Boan Bogdanovich, 21 points, 5 rebounds, shot 7 of 12. Miles Turner got the start in this one, had 15 points, 11 rebounds, shot 3 of 6. So, did well at the free throw line there. Then you had Darren Collison with 16 points, 5 of 11 shooting, 2 of 6 from the 3-point line. And then Victor Oladipo with 13 points, 5 assists, shot 5 of 12, 1 of 5 from the 3-point line. Let's see, off the bench for... For Indiana, you had Lance Stevenson with 13 points, 5 of 8 shooting, 2 of 2 from the 3-point line. Once again, the Indiana Pacers pulled that one out, 105-101. Pacers might be someone who are uh, might be a team we're trying to trade for Tyreek Evans too, so I'd watch out for them as far as what they do at the tread deadline because even if they don't get Tyreek Evans, I still think that they're going to be bringing in someone because I think they're uh, their team buying in right now, so we'll see how it all ends up. Next game up, we had the Lakers facing off with the Orlando Magic. This play- game took place in Orlando, and Orlando blew out the Lakers 127-105. to For the Lakers, you had Julius Randle with 20 points, 9 rebounds, shot 7-9. and nine. Brandon Ingram, 13 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists, shot 5-12. of 12. You got um, Tyler Ennis, who had a start at point guard in this one. He had 5 points, 4 rebounds, shot 2-4. of four. K- 
Kentavious Caldwell Pope. He had 12 points, shot 4 of 9 off the bench. Not a great game from Kyle Kuzma, only 11 points, shot 5 of 13. And then you had Jordan Clarkson with 20 points, shot 7 of 14, 2 of 5 from the three point line. For the Magic, you had most Spates who got to start in this one, had 21 points, 4 rebounds, shot 6 of 11. And then you had Jonathan Simmons with 14 points, Evan Fournier with 19 points. He shot 6 of 10, 5 of 7 from the three point line. Alfred Payton, five, 15 points, excuse me, 7 rebounds, 6 assists, shot 6 of 10. Let's see off the bench. You had Shelvin Mack with another good game, 13 points, 7 assists, shot 4 of 9. As for the Lakers, I'm pretty curious to see who's there, who they're going to be trading at the deadline. I know they're going to be sellers. I'm not sure, dude. I think and, um, Jordan, Julius Randle's name has been thrown around there as far as, who's gonna, uh, as far as people who could get traded. Same with Jordan Clarkson. I guess right there, those are the, probably the two biggest names. Maybe you could see a guy like Contavious Caldwell Pope getting moved, but I'm curious to see where Julius Randle ends up if he does get traded. I think he'll be sent to a contender most likely, just because of how well he's been playing, and I'm sure that the Lakers could get like a first-round pick for a team who's going to be ending up in the playoffs. So watch out for him, and like I said, watch out for Jordan Clarkson. That's going to be a guy who's going to get moved too, and that's a nice little score off the bench for a contending team. But we got to talk about the next game now. Next game, we have the Charlotte Hornets facing off with the Atlanta Hawks. Charlotte won this one, 123-110. This game was in Atlanta. Frank Kaminsky got the start in this one. He had 11 points, shot 4 of 10. Michael Kidd-Gilchrist with 10 points, shot 5 of 7. Dwight Howard, 20 points, 12 rebounds, shot 8 of 13. Kemba Walker with a big game here, 38 points, 6 assists, shot 12 of 20, 9 of 13 from the three-point line. Nicholas Batum, only 9 shots in this one, made 4 of them. Uh, had 10 points, 10 rebounds, or 11 rebounds, excuse me, 10 assists. So he had a triple-double there. No one really talked about Nicholas Batum getting a triple-double yesterday. Maybe that's just because it's Nicholas Batum, but I mean, it's a low scoring. It's a low triple-double. That's like a fringe triple-double, but nonetheless, he got it. So good for him right there. Then you had the Atlanta Hawks. Dennis Schroeder with only 13 points. Shot 6 of 14, 0 of 5 from the three-point line, 9 assists. And then Kent Bazemore had 25 points, 5 assists, shot 8 of 11. Dennis Schroeder is a weird point guard. All right. I don't, like, I'm not sure what I think about Dennis Schroeder. I know that Atlanta, like, that's their future franchise, like, that's their franchise point guard. But, I mean, what do we, what do we think about Dennis Schroeder? I mean, when this Hawks team was competing in the playoffs against the Celtics teams, I remember Dennis Schroeder playing well, but it's just like, he's a weird point guard because he's not a great shooter. He's not great at uh, passing the ball. I mean, yesterday he did have nine assists, but I mean, like I said, it's just, it's not something that's really consistent, you know? So Dennis Schroeder has always been someone that's been kind of like, not sure what to think of him. Is he good or is he just a nice point guard in this league? I don't know. But going back to Kemba Walker, I mean, big game from him. I'm not, I'm still not sure what's going to end up going on with him as far as the tread line, deadline goes. Is he going to go or is, or is he going to stay? I mean, this 38-point game helps his case, I guess, for as far as maybe them keeping him. But nonetheless, I mean, it's kind of interesting to see what ends up with Kemba Walker. Next game, though, we had the Philadelphia 76ers facing off with the Brooklyn Nets. This game took place in Brooklyn. I picked Philly, so obviously Brooklyn won this one. They won 116-108. For Philly, you had Dario Saric with 12 points, 6 rebounds, 4 assists, shot 3 of 12. Not a great night from him. Robert Covington, 6 points, only 1 rebound, 1 assist, shot 2 of 3. Uh, Joel Embiid, 29 points, 14 rebounds, shot 8 of 19 from the field, 1 of 5 from the 3-point line. Ben Simmons, big game from him, 24 points, 7 assists, 2 rebounds, shot 11 of 16. J.J. Redick had 20 points, shot 4 of 10, 3 of 4 from the 3-point line. For the Brooklyn Nets, you had Damari Carroll with 15 points, 5 assists, shot 5 of 8 from the field, 3 of 3 from the 3-point line. Spencer Dinwiddle with 27 points, 4 assists, shot 6 of 13, 2 of 4 from the 3-point th um, line. The guy's been having a real great season so far, this, so far this year. No one's really been talking about him too much, but people should be paying more attention to Spencer Dinwiddle. Finally, um, remember what his first name was. All right, we had Alan Crabb with 14 points, 5 rebounds, shot 6 of 13, 2 of 8 from the 3-point line. Then off the bench, you had Jaleel Okafor with 8 points, 3 rebounds, shot 4 of 5. And then D'Angelo Russell with 22 points, 5 rebounds, 3 assists, shot 8 of 15. Jaleel Okafor, man. Is that is Jaleel Okafor a bust so far in his career? Like, would you consider him a bust? Never did anything with Philly. Barely played. Now with the Nets, he's coming off the bench, and I don't think he's going to be a starter anytime soon. Like, what do we think? Like, Jaleel Okafor, like, what do we think of him? I think... I think we forgot about him so much that we don't really just label him a bust. It's just we forgot to even do that. Like it's just now we get, get we understand what he is, and maybe he was just drafted way too high, and this is what Jill Local Four has always been. But nonetheless, I mean, I don't know. He's a weird player. Next game up, we had the Miami Heat facing off with the Cleveland Cavaliers. 
in Cleveland. And would you look at that? Cleveland pulled off the win, 91-89. For Miami, you had Tyler Johnson with 8 points, 4 rebounds, shot 4 of 9. Josh Richardson, Richardson, 15 points, 3 rebounds, 2 assists, shot 7 of 13, 1 of 4 from the 3-point line. Hassan Whiteside played two, um, 24 minutes in this one, only took 4 shots, 2 of 4 from the field, 8 rebounds, 9 points. Goran Dragic going to be in the All-Star game. 18 points, 6 assists, 3 rebounds. Shot 7 of 17, 1 of 5 from the 3-point line. Oh, I said James Johnson stats earlier as far as the 8 points, 4 rebounds goes. Tyler Johnson had 11 points, 6 assists, one ass, uh, uh, six rebounds, 1 assist. Excuse me. Shot 4 of 12, 1 of 7 from the 3-point line. Then for the Cavs, you have James, uh, James... What's his name? Yeah, James Crowder, right? I can't... What's his first name? Right? I don't know. I might. I might just be drawing a blank. But Crowder had 11 points, seven rebounds, four seven shooting. LeBron had 24 points, 11 rebounds, five assists, eight of 20. Jay Crowder. It's Jay Crowder. I don't know why I drew a blank there. But nonetheless, like I said, LeBron James, 24 points, 11 rebounds, shot eight of 21, one of six from the three point line. Tristan Thompson, solid, zero points, over five from the field, six rebounds, one assist. Isaiah Thomas, 13 points, 6 assists, 5 rebounds, shot 2 of 15. Dude has not found his shot since he's been back. I'm not sure if he's ever going to find it either. I mean, this guy is just not look good at all. I understand he's coming off the hip injury trying to get reacclimated, but, I mean, how long is that going to take? Eventually, the Cavs are just going to have to be like, you know what? Isaiah's our guy. We're going to wait, or you got to trade the guy because, I mean, with the way he's playing now, it's brutal. All right. Then you had J.R. Smith with 6 points, shot 3 of 5 from the field, 0 of 2 from the 3-point line. And then Channing Frye, 16 points, 4 rebounds, 6 of 9 shooting, 2 of 4 from the 3-point line off the bench. Channing Frye is the guy who this year has been putting in consistent performances on that Cavs team. Channing Frye shouldn't be traded. I think you keep him, just reward him for not being as bad as everyone else, but he's probably going to end up getting traded. All right, so yeah, once again, the Cavs won that one, 91-89. Next up, we have the had the Chicago Bulls facing off with the Portland Trailblazers in Portland. This game was over when it started. Portland won this one, 124-108 for the Bulls. You had Robin Lopez with 6 points, 2 rebounds, shot 3 of 9. Jeremy Graham with 11 points, shot 4 of 8. Zach Levine, 23 points, 8 of 13 shooting, 3 of 4 from the 3-point line. Justin Holliday, only 9 points in this one, shot 3 of 12, 2 of 8 from the 3-point line. For the Trailblazers, look at CJ McCollum. Drop off, drop 50 points, 5 rebounds, shot 18 of 25. Had, what was it, 28 points after the first quarter. Didn't play well with game before, so nice little pick-me-up right here, I guess you could say. Damian Lillard had 13 points, 7 assists, 4 rebounds, shot 5 of 9 from the field. 1 of 5 from the 3-point line. Joseph Nurkic, 12 points, 9 rebounds. And then you had Alfa Rukamina with 8 points, 6 rebounds, shot 3 of 6 from the field. 2 of 2 from the 3-point line. Once again, Portland pulled out the win there. 124-108. Then you had the Phoenix Suns facing off with Dallas. This game was in Phoenix, and Phoenix won this one, 102-88. Second game on ESPN was a bit of a, a bit of a bad one. You had Dirk Nowitzki with 14 points, 10 rebounds, double double for Dirk, five of eight shooting, three of five from the three point line. You had Harrison Barnes with 15 points, nine rebounds, five of 17 from the field, two of five from the three point line. Dennis Smith Jr. 17 points, six assists, four rebounds, shot six of 15. Then you had Wesley Matthews with a garbage shooting night, only 6 points, shot 2 of 17, 0 of 9 from the 3-point line, had 4 rebounds, 3 assists. For those Phoenix Suns, you had Marquise Chris with 15 points, 12 rebounds, shot 5 of 7. TJ Warren, 20 points, 4 rebounds, 4 assists, shot 10 of 16. Josh Jackson continuing to put together the consistent performances, got the start in this one, had 21 points, 8 rebounds, shot 9 of 14 in this one. And you had Devin Booker with not not so great shooting night. 5 of 14 from the field, 2 of 7 from the 3-point line, 15 points, 4 assists. Josh Jackson, watch out for him. He's starting to figure out. He's starting to play a whole lot better than he did so far in the season. I mean, the last couple of weeks, he's really picked it up. So that's going to wrap it up for this segment. Next up, we're going to be talking about anything else going on in sports. And we'll be making my picks for Thursday night's NBA game. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red-hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy-football-podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info.
Sports Podcast. So far in today's show, we've talked about LeBron going to the Warriors, possibly, hypothetically. Thanks a lot, ESPN again. Uh, talked about Jason Garrett and the Cowboys. Talked about uh, the NBA games from yesterday. And for this segment, I'm really going to enjoy this one, all right? As you know, fourth segment is always just pretty much anything I want to talk about, anything running through my mind, and the basketball legend, Stefan Marbury, has retired. All right, retired from his Chinese league, done from the NBA. He's officially retired. And he said that he had Hall of Fame numbers. So that got me thinking, is Stefan Marbury a Hall of Famer? So he played about, let's see, 8, 11, 14, 15 seasons in the NBA. All right, from 96 to 2009, 2008. Yeah, 96 to 2008. Stephon Murray Marbury was in the NBA. And you know what? His points per game stats were pretty good. He averaged um, almost 20 a game in his NBA career. Let me see. What did, what did he do? Free throw percentage around near 80%. Had 78% free throw percentage. Um, let's see. Assists average. He averaged 19 points, 7 assists in his NBA career. That's pretty good, I think. I might be... Um, I might be giving him a little bit too much credit. I'm not sure really what the criteria is for making it into a Hall of Fame. And that's one thing I wonder too. Like, as far as Stephon Marbury in the Hall of Fame, do we do we talk about like his stats in China? Like is that like is that uh can you do that? Like it's not the NBA Hall of Fame. This is the just basketball hall of fame. And let me let me look at his China stats, all right? And you know what? I was I learned some stuff. There's a couple of notable name players in China, but here, Stefan Marbury in China played from 2011 to obviously this final year, all right? Averaged 26 points his first year, 28 the second year, 21 the third, 18 the fourth, 19 the fifth, 21 the sixth, and then this past year averaged 15 points, all right? And I mean. Field goal percentage was pretty much near 50% each year. Three-point percentage was pretty much his NBA in the 30s. And let's see. Assists, about around five to six assists. I mean, are those stats in China good enough to uh, put Stefan Marbury in the Hall of Fame? Honestly, I think Marbury should be a Hall of Famer. All right. Put up 19 and 7. And, like, I don't know. Should he? Stephon Marbury is such a weird player. All right. And. Man. I'm just like. Like I'm just like stuck. I don't think he is a Hall of Famer. Like what is like. I'm not even sure like what the. Like what you need as the minimum to be in the Hall of Fame. Maybe he was just an NBA player who had a nice little career. All right. Was a bit of a little tiny distraction I feel. Uh, I don't know. Was Stephon Marbury a distraction in the NBA? I mean I don't know. Stephon, like, he, was just, he just had a weird career. Maybe, I don't know, maybe, I don't, Stefan Marbury is just the ultimate, man, I'm stuck right now just thinking about just his career, like, how do you describe it? Obviously, he was pretty good, all right, like I said, I mean, he averaged 19 in the NBA, 7 assists, shot 43% from his entire career, that was pretty good, I mean, I don't know, but he's a legend. Like, not like a real legend, obviously, but, you know, you know what I mean. Nonetheless, though, I was looking at uh, the Chinese League. I was looking, trying to find um, Stefan Marbury stats there. They got some, no, like I said, they got some notable names there. You got guys like Jimmer Ferdet, like guys like I thought, like, just fell off the face of the earth. They're playing in China, all right? They're not out, they're not just not playing basketball. Like, guys who just didn't make it in the NBA or just their careers passed them up, they're in China, dude. I need to start watching the Chinese league. I don't even know when it starts or when it ends or when the season goes, but I got to start watching. I mean, you got Jimmer Fredette, Marshawn Brooks, uh, Russ Smith. I think it's the guy that played for Louisville, right? Yeah, I think that's him. And you got Jared Selinger, dude, averaged 17 rebounds this year in China. Von Wafer. Von Wafer is still playing basketball, you guys. Averaging 30 a game in China. Let's see. What's his assist numbers looking like? Do we have that? He's averaging about four assists. So that's pretty much Von Wafer right there. 30 points, four assists. Dude's shooting 54% from the field in China. Ridiculous. J.J. Hickson. Uh, let's see. 
Luis Skoll is in China. Brandon Jennings is in China. Carl Landry is in China. Ty Lawson's playing in China. Uh, let's see, anyone else? Brandon Bass, he's out there. Don Donatas Montiunis, the dude that used to play for the Rockets, is out there. Terrence Jones. Remember Terrence Jones used to play for the Pelicans? We got Tyler Hansbro. Let's see, is there anyone else after Tyler Hansbro? I think Tyler Hansbro was like the last true notable name. Stephon Marbury, obviously, but he's retired now. Let's see, anyone else? I think that Tyler Hansbro is the last notable name out there. Yep, he is. So, I mean, you got some players out there, all right? Obviously, they weren't the best in the NBA, but I mean, guys like Tyler Hansbro played a few years in the NBA. It wasn't, wasn't a great career. Jared Sullinger, I mean, he had a nice little tiny run with the Celtics. Von Wafford built himself a nice little solid career. Let's see if I could find Von, Von Wafer's NBA stats. Played seven seasons, all right? Let's see. Started off with the Lakers. I mean, actually, you know what? Von Wafer was just bounced around year after year. I mean, the dude only averaged five points. Only averaged five points in his career. Ah, Maybe it might have put a little bit too much stock into Von Wafer. Von Wafer was nice in uh, 2K. Which game was it? I think it was like 2K12 or 2K, 2K10, I think. But he was nice in there. Nonetheless, though, I mean, he's in China tearing it up. And that's one thing, too. I guess the NBA players, I didn't really cut it in the NBA. Like, obviously, in the NBA and go to China and play well. It's just because, I guess, NBA players are that good. Like, even the guys that don't cut it can go dominate anywhere else. But... Yeah, I didn't know that all these guys were out here. Like, I was surprised. I was wondering, like, where Brandon Jennings is. He's in China. Like, I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe one day we'll see O.J. Mayo in the Chinese League. I know O.J. Mayo, OJ Mayo just, that's a guy who truly fell off the face of the earth. All right, dude was a solid player, O.J. Mayo. Played for the Bucks and who else did he play for? He played for the Bucks and some other team. I can't remember exactly, but nonetheless, I mean, I'm going to have to look it up now. We're going to talk about O.J. Mayo. See, that's what we do for the fourth segment. We talk about anything, anything at all. Has OJ Mayo played in China? He played for Memphis. Memphis, the Bucks. And he played for Dallas one year. Let's see. Did OJ Mayo play in China? I think he might have when he like left. OJ Mayo. China. Let's see. What did OJ Mayo? Did he ever? Oh, he's not. All right. So there's articles about OJ Mayo. Why is he not playing in China? Man, I got to There's a lot of... OJ Mayo, yeah, he got banned two years in 2016 from the NBA drug ban. And, like, I know, like, I know, like, I read recently, like, a few months ago, or maybe a little bit more than that, where OJ Mayo was trying to, um... Yeah, it was in August, trying to uh, pretty much revive his career and just trying to get back to it. But, let's see... Yeah, OJ Mayo, like I said, he just fell off the face of the earth after he got banned from the NBA for two years. I don't know why he's not in China, though. He should be. Just to go out there and play. I mean, after that, return back to the NBA. Because I know he wanted to. That was the thing. OJ Mayo, I, I read, I think it was a Bleacher Report article on him. And he just, um, I can't remember like what exactly it was. Like, just people. I can't remember. There's something about, like, I think, his outside influence which just really got to him. And that was one of his biggest pro problems, I think it was. But... I can't remember exactly, but it was a really good article that I read. I'm going to have to go look it up and uh, read back to it. Maybe we'll talk about talk about O.J. Mayo a little bit more tomorrow in the fourth segment for the show. But, yeah, O.J. Mayo, I mean, if he's trying to get his career back, he's trying to play basketball, go to China. O.J. Mayo would dominate in China. O.J. Mayo, he's already 30. Ooh, NBA career might be done. He's old. Nonetheless, though, I mean, Stephon Marbury getting back to the point. Said he has Hall of Fame numbers. I'm not sure if he'll ever make it in. But, I mean, he did build himself a nice little NBA career, averaging 19-7. and seven. So, that's all I got to say about that. That was actually pretty fun talking about. I really enjoyed that, actually. This is why I love doing the show. I can talk about whatever in the fourth segment. So, now we're going to bring it back to the real M to the NBA. And we're going to make my picks for tonight's games. We only got one, two, three, four, five games going on tonight. All right, first up, we have the Memphis Grizzlies facing off with the Detroit Pistons. Who do I got in that one? I'm not sure. Is Blake, Blake Griffin going to be in this one? I don't I don't know. Let me see if I can check if Blake Griffin's going to be playing. If he is, then you know what? I got Detroit, but I just might have Detroit because, I mean, Stanley Johnson surprised the heck out of me against the Cavs. I didn't think, um, didn't think he'd, be, he'd be playing like that, but let's see. I'm not sure if Blake Griffin is playing. There's no real 
Oh, he is going to make his debut today. All right, yeah, I got I got the Pistons. That's I got to watch that game, actually. It's on at 4 o'clock. Yeah, so I'll be watching the Pistons taking on the Grizzlies. You're going to watch Blake Griffin in his first game with the Detroit Pistons. So, yep, I got the Pistons beating the Grizzlies in this one. All right, so let's see. Next up, we got the Raptors facing off with the Wizards. No John Wall. They did beat the Thunder the other day, talking about the Wizards, but I don't think they're going to be able to beat the Raptors. I'm going to go with the Raptors in this one. Both teams are pretty um, solid as far as their records, respectively. The Raptors on the road, the Wizards at home. Wizards are 16-9 and at home. Raptors are 15-11 and on the road, but I'm going to go with the Raptors just because they're the better team. Then we're going to go head over to Minnesota. We got the Bucks facing off with the Timberwolves. Bucks have been playing some good basketballs of late. Giannis Antetokounmpo, Antetokounmpo has been on a tear lately, but I'm going to go with the home team in this one. I'm going to go with the Timberwolves. They're 26 and, um, 20 and 6 at home. Bucks are 10 and 13 on the road. So I got the Timberwolves winning this one. Then we got the Rockets facing off with the Spurs on TNT. That's going to be another fun one to watch, but I just might still be watching the Pistons game at that point because I want to see if Stanley Johnson could uh, replicate what he did against the Cavs again. So, but yeah, back to the point. We got the Rockets facing off with the Spurs. I'm going to go with the, this one's a tough one because the Spurs play good basketball, but I'm going to go with the, I'm going to go with the Spurs. They're at home, 22 and 4 at home. Rockets are 16 and 7 on the road. I'm going to go with the Spurs. I'm going to believe in them. I think they can do it. Then we got the Thunder facing off with the Nuggets. I wish I knew, you know what? I'm going to go with the Nuggets in this one. The Nuggets are a good home team, and the Thunder are a really bad road team. Thunder are 11-14 and 14 on the road, and the Nuggets are 19-7 and 7 at home. I think the Nuggets are going to pull this one out. They usually do tend to play well against um, solid teams. So, yeah, I'm going to go with the Nuggets. All right, just to recap my picks, I got the Pistons beating the Grizzlies. Again, that's Blake, it's going to be Blake Griffin's uh, debut with the Pistons. Then I got the Raptors beating the Wizards, the Timberwolves beating the Bucks. The Spurs beating the Rockets and the Nuggets beating the Thunder. Let's see, that's one, two. I got three upset picks or two upset picks tonight, excuse me. So, yeah, those are the teams I got going on tonight. That's going to actually wrap it up for today's show. Today, we talked about just to recap uh, LeBron James possibility of him maybe ending up on the Warriors. Talked about Jason Garrett. Recapped the games from last night. And for this fourth segment, talked about Stephon Marbury retiring. Talked a bit about the Chinese League too. See, we're sports. We talk about everything. And then we made my picks for tonight's game. So thanks for listening. Tomorrow we'll be talking a lot about the Super Bowl. Make my picks finally. It's going to be a fun one. So stay tuned till tomorrow. Thanks for listening to the GSMC Sports Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Jesse Tapia. And like I said, we'll talk to you tomorrow. So stay tuned. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program